Today's case is still an unsolved case in Ireland. Trevor Dealey, a young man from Ireland, goes out on a Christmas walk party in Dublin City and he went missing and he was never seen again. There's eerie CCTV footage that you don't want to miss. It's been 22 years since Trevor went missing. My name is Sean, I post True Crime Weekly. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Now let's get into the case of Trevor Dealey. Today's story brings us to Dublin, Ireland. This is my hometown and is a case quite close to home. Trevor Dealey, a 22 year old man at the time he disappeared. He was born in Nace, Ireland. Nace is right beside Dublin, about 10 minutes away. It's in a small town in County Kildare. It has a population of around 22,000 people. Trevor was the youngest of four siblings. He studied IT in Dublin and he really enjoyed working with computers. When he completed a computer course, he got a job in Dublin. He got a job at the Bank of Ireland in the IT department in 1999. His colleagues described him as having no enemies and one of the most down to earth people they have ever met. Trevor had met a woman in Dublin in the summer previous to his disappearance. She was from Anchorage, Alaska, and she came over to Dublin to visit for a while, but she had to go back home. And a few weeks before Trevor went missing, he went over to visit her in Alaska. Now Trevor returning back to Ireland from his trip, he went back to work, which was the beginning of December. On the 7th of December, Trevor was back in Dublin and was attending a Christmas work party on that Thursday in Dublin Sea. He went to the Hilton Hotel, where the event was, and had a few drinks in Copperface Jacks. This is a nightclub in the sea. Copperface Jacks is a cheap place to go. It's usually free in and drinks can be cheaper on weekdays depending on the promotions. After this, him and his colleagues went to the nightclub Book Wallis. This was on Leeson Street. At about 3.25am, Trevor had decided to call it a night. So he left. Now on this night in particular, there was very heavy winds in Dublin Sea. And Trevor made the decision to go back and get his umbrella from his office. On any other night, he would have just taken a taxi back to his apartment which would have been about a 10 minute ride. But on this particular night, there was a, a taxi strike in Dublin City and obviously there was a, a big heavy storm. On the way back to his apartment was his job, which is why he stopped in to get the umbrella. So he dropped into the bank to get the umbrella. While there, his colleague was working the night shift. So I spoke to him for a bit. He had a cup of tea, he checked some emails and he wrote down the to-do list for the next morning. He exited the building to make his way home at 4.02 a.m. The next morning, which was Friday the 8th of December, Trevor never showed up for work. They just thought he slept in and decided not to show up after the night he had. But he didn't show up or ring in the following Monday, which they thought was very strange and very out of character of Trevor. After he never showed up for work, it was found no one seen or heard anything from Trevor all weekend. And his housemates were all away for the weekend and didn't hear anything either. The bank got in touch with his family. They went to his apartment to find he was not there. I'm wondering if he even came home the night after he left the bank. His family checked with the local businesses around where he lived and where he was last seen. And his brother even walked the route Trevor would have walked. And the Garda, which is the Irish police, they checked his PC at the bank and they checked with his colleagues too. But they also found nothing. It was at this point Trevor's family friends started to gather the CCTV footage from around the area he was last seen, or the route he would have last took, and they found this very suspicious footage.
So from the footage just shown, Trevor walked by a man stood at a pillar beside the bank. He was in all black. He stood there for a half an hour before Trevor arrived while taking a call. Trevor walked by, paying no attention to him, leading us to believe he didn't even know him. When Trevor then walks by, the man follows him a moment later to the second gate about 20 feet away. At this point, the man in black was already at the second gate. He likely ran by Trevor to get there first, if this was the case. They spoke briefly before Trevor opens the gate and walks in, closing it behind him. Trevor then goes inside the Bank of Ireland, and the man in black stands there for a few more minutes, then crosses the road out of the view of the CCTV. Then after Trevor's visit to the bank, he was seen on the CCTV leaving the same way he came in, and began his walk home. It was found on this walk he called his friend named Glenn, who he was talking to that night, but it went to voicemail. Trevor left a voicemail saying, Hi Glenn, I've missed you there. Just on the way home, all good, I'll talk to you tomorrow. We then see Trevor at 4.14am, walking by an ATM on Baggett Street, 15 minutes away from his apartment. See, the strange thing is, when you see Trevor passing, not even 30 seconds later, a man in all black is following behind him. When I first seen this footage many years ago, I just remember thinking this is it was very haunting. It's in the early hours of the morning on a very stormy night. The last thing you expect is someone to be following very closely behind you, which I think was such a red flag. Now, it is not known if the man in black is the same man that was at the gate talking to him, but the police believe it is. Obviously now, going by this, no one could identify the man in black. So the guardie checked the canal at the Bagger Street Bridge, which was a river of water, thinking he may have fell in. But again, nothing. It was found days after Trevor went missing that President Clinton of the United States was coming to visit Ireland. And he would be visiting nearby areas to where Trevor went missing. And before the President comes over, his security comes in and does a sweep of the area, just to make sure it is safe. They check in bins, in gardens, they check everywhere. They would have come in on the weekend just after Trevor went missing as the president was arriving that Tuesday. And the fear is here that they may have unknowingly destroyed any evidence that was left on the route Trevor took. Police looked into the possibility Trevor ended his own life as they spoke with the girl from Alaska. And she said that she wasn't into him as much as he was into her and that they didn't get much time to see each other while he was in Alaska. But this was quickly ruled out as Trevor was a happy-go-lucky young man with his whole life ahead of him. And with lots of friends and he showed no signs of doing anything so the police leaned towards suspicious activity the case went cold until 2017 when a new tip came in two filmmakers enhanced the footage to try and identify the man they realized there may have been a second man at the bank one at the first gate and then one at the second gate right before trevor goes in if this was the case that the first man was at the first pillar then followed trevor and ran by him going to the second pillar it could throw Trevor off, but he looked relaxed. He didn't look spooked or anything. And now with this concern, the full CCTV footage was released. There was two men standing at the gate minutes after Trevor went inside, as the original only showed clips of one man. But this clip you see two of them suspiciously staring into the bank. But the police said it was two employees from the bank and that they talked to them already which is why they were not added into the original CCTV footage. This seems a bit strange. Why would they stand at the gate staring in like that? And it was lashing around in Dublin. Surely if they were employees, they, they wouldn't be standing there staring in, at, in towards the office. They would be opening the gate and going inside. But unfortunately, nothing came from the additional CCTV footage. And then another huge tip came in. An informant to the guard, he said a well-known criminal from Crumlin, which is a town in Dublin, just outside of Dublin City, approached him and said he had shot and killed Trevor after an argument, and that he had took Trevor's body to a wooded area in Chapel Lizard, which is just outside the city, and buried Trevor's body. With this, there was a huge dig that took place of the area, but no evidence was found. So what do we think happened to Trevor? This case is still unsolved 22 years later, even with a 100,000 euro award for the information leading to Trevor. 
Now, I've seen some places online saying this could be a bank robbery gone wrong. And Trevor could have been just in the wrong place at the wrong time. But I don't know what to think of that theory. I think the guys at the gate hold the key to whatever happened to Trevor that night. Saying that, I did come across this thread on Reddit while researching this case. It said, and I quote, I was in the same area that night at around the same time. I was 19 at the time. The company I did work experience for, while I was in college, they invited me on their Christmas night out. I was walking towards the city centre with about four or five other girls at around four or four thirty ish in the morning. We passed a man on the Mount Street North Umberland Road Bridge who was leaning over it vomiting into the canal. I remember that because as soon as we got to the Mount Street side of the road, one of the girls I was with vomited all over the footpath. She blamed it on seeing the guy we passed getting sick, making her want to get sick too. We looked back, but the guy had disappeared. We thought nothing of it at the time, but when it started appearing in the news a few days later, I've always wondered if that was Trevor Dealey we saw, and maybe he fell into the canal. End quote. This may be a big possibility. There is an area in the canal that cannot be checked as it is too deep. It also can't be drained as it will create a huge sinkhole and it will affect the buildings around it. Now I hope Trevor's family find out what happened to their son. My thoughts are with them. There was a 20th anniversary appeal for Trevor's family from the Guardi in 2021. I will attach the video. It's been 20 years since Trevor Daly disappeared. Um, our investigation at Pier Street Garden Station remains open and active. Uh, we're particularly appealing to anybody that may have been in the Haddington Road, Wilton Terrace area on the early hours of the morning of December the 8th, 2000. Um, particularly uh, the unknown male as depicted in the CCTV footage or anybody who may have been in his company that night or may know him if they could come forward uh, and talk to us at Pier Street Garda Station and provide the information that they have out there that can progress this investigation and uh, we're appealing to people to come forward and assist us. Anybody that has information or that wants to contact us in relation to this investigation can contact us at Pier Street Garda Station, at Crime Stoppers or indeed any other Garda Station in the country. Trevor is missing since the early hours of December 8th, 2000. Shortly after we learned of his disappearance, we discovered CCTV footage of him walking down Haddington Road at 4.14 a.m. To this day, this remains the last confirmed sighting of Trevor. The reason we are here today is to appeal to that person or persons who knows what happened next. As a family, we have never believed that people can disappear into thin air. We know someone knows something and we ask that you come forward to put an end to this relentless nightmare. Many people over the past 16 years have questioned why we continue to search for Trevor. The answer is simple if you knew Trevor. We can sum it up by saying if the situation was reversed, he would never give up on us. We have felt for many years that a fresh review conducted on Trevor's case would be very beneficial utilizing current day technologies. We would like to express our sincere gratitude to the team that Superintendent Joseph Gannon and Detective Superintendent Peter O'Boyle assembled last year to take this review on. They are still working through this process, but the technology used to clean up the CCTV footage being shown today is one example of the kind of approach we were hoping for. We are very grateful for all of the help we've received today from the public. However, one glaring fact remains. We still need your help. Somebody somewhere knows something. Please help us find Trevor. Please come forward. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please drop a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I will see you in the next video.